we will start with a brief background of Java programming language. Java programming language is an object-oriented programming language and it was designed by James Gosling at Sun Microsystems and it was later acquired by Oracle Corporation and it was first released or it was formally launched in 1995. Code written in Java programming language is described as simple and small. It is simple and small because you could embed small or short Java codes inside HTML codes of web pages, allowing these web pages to become dynamic web pages, running some codes not just consisting of static text or graphic images, but these web pages actually could perform some operations or computations. Java is an interpreter language, meaning it is interpreted, not compiled like other programming languages. Now remember, last semester, we discussed about C programming language. And recall that when the C source code is compiled, right? So first, it is compiled by a compiler and then the compiler will generate the object code and this object code will then undergo a series of compilation or interpretation or translation so that you will finally generate the executable code with a file name extension .exe. So, the source code written in C programming language is compiled. The Java source code, uh, the one with the dot .java file name extension, is initially compiled, that is, as described here, the Java source codes are compiled into OS independent codes. So initially, the Java source code, the one with the file name extension that Java, is initially compiled and the result of the initial compilation is a file name with a dot class extension, file name extension. So, for example, if the source code has a file name hello.java, when it is initially compiled, it will generate the file with the file name hello.class. This is the file name of the file, which is the result of the initial compilation. And this is the OS independent codes. So the hello that class is the OS independent code. It is called OS independent code because this code now with a file name hello that class can be executed in any platform or it can be interpreted in any platform. So again, the result of the initial compilation which is this one, hello.class, is called OS independent codes, and they are the ones that are platform independent, and from that time on, they are now interpreted. So, say this is the source code, which is hello, hello.java. Initially, it is compiled. And the result of the initial compilation is the file with the file name hello.class. And this is the one which we call as OS independent codes. 
and this would then be interpreted by the Java virtual machine so this is interpreted by the Java virtual machine installed in any computer having any platform so this OS independent Java codes the one with the extension that class is a Java code that runs on Java VM or we call it the Java virtual machine installed in any computer we also call the Java programming language as a programming language that allows application developer to write once and run anywhere meaning the developer or the programmer can write the Java code once and then once it is initially compiled it can be run or executed anywhere referring to any operating system or any platform any platform like it can run in Windows it can run in Linux it can run in Unix it can run in Mac computers the diagram we have here depicts the process that I have described earlier so as I mentioned earlier say the Java source code has the file name hello.java again take note that the file name extension of the Java source code is dot Java and as I have mentioned earlier this source code with the file name extension dot Java is initially compiled and the resulting file will have a file name hello dot class so that class is the file name extension of the OS independent code and we call this OS independent code the one with the file name hello.class as Java byte code and from this time on this Java byte code with the file name extension that class will be interpreted it will not be compiled anymore but it will be interpreted by the Java virtual machine installed in any platform so when you install Java say the latest version is JDK version 15 the latest if you install this Java installer into your computer whether that computer has the operating system Windows or Unix or Mac or Linux the Java virtual machine is installed and it is the Java virtual machine installed in that computer that has any platform whether it's Windows Unix or Mac as long as you have installed the Java installer like this one the JDK version 15 the latest then the Java virtual machine is operational and whenever you run the Java bytecode which is this one for example the hello that class it will be executed and so we call this OS independent code the hello that class as platform independent because it can run in any operating system as long as in that computer or in that operating system you have installed the Java virtual machine in running Java programs or source codes, we could either use an IDE or Integrated Development Environment which allows us to create and run Java programs or we could create the Java program or source code using any text editor like Notepad and then run execute the Java program in the command line. The first option that is to use an IDE like Eclipse NetBeans, 
J Creator. These are just three of the common IDEs that we can use to create and run Java programs. The use of IDE is easier because running or executing Java programs is done by just clicking the run button. And the whole process of initially compiling, that is generating the OS independent code with that class file name extension, and the interpretation or actual execution of the compiled that class code is done in one run command. Plus, the many other features of an IDE which you can use to help you create or debug a Java program easily. So as mentioned earlier, the file name extension of the Java source code is dot Java. And if you choose to create, if you choose to compile initially and interpret the Java program using the command line, then you could use the command at the prompt Java. So say this is the command prompt. Say you have your users and then one. Say this is the command prompt. You would say Java hello dot Java. So this command Java, which is available once you have already installed the Java installer into the computer. So this is available. And um, say, for example, that this is the directory where you have installed the Java. And so you can locate this command Java in this directory. So at the command prompt, you would say Java, and then you could have one or more spaces, but normally it's just one space, and then followed by the file name of the Java source code. So after this, when the initial compilation is successful, in the same directory, you could find the file name hello.class. When you can find this file in there, in that folder, then the compilation of the source code is successful. After that, you could execute this file, hello.class, using the command java. Okay, so at the prompt, uh, say users1, you would say java, and then one or more spaces, and then the file name, hello, that class or even just uh, the file name hello without the extension so the second command which is java will allow this java bytecode okay so again recall that we call this java bytecode okay the one which is os independent code the one with the that class file name extension so remember that there are two steps to run your java program first you need to do the initial compilation of the source code by using the command at the prompt java and then one or more spaces and then the file name of the java source code once it is successful you will see this file in the same folder or directory and take note that the file name extension of the java bytecode which is the os independent code or the one with the dot class extension okay is this one and to execute or run the bytecode you use the command java so in the diagram here this tells us the whole process of running the Java source code or Java program. First, the source code with the file name extension that Java is being compiled using the command Java, as I have mentioned here. And then the bytecode with the file name extension that class is generated in the same folder. And then we execute 
this bytecode by using the command java and you will then see the running session of your java program there are three java application types and these are first the application or this is the standalone java program it runs on java virtual machine and this is executed by java command as a standalone application the second one is servlet these are java codes running on a web server and this generates dynamic html contents on the server side and provides them to the client the third one is called applet or java applet this runs on a web browser and this is downloaded through the network so recall the three java application types first the application or the standalone java program that runs on the virtual machine and second the servlet that runs on the web server and the third is java applet the ones that runs on a web browser